Hi guys, I hope that you're having a fabulous day. Welcome back to my channel. Today is all about updates. This is technically the second episode of a brand new series called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, as you guys can see in the title. But I asked you on my YouTube community page if you would be interested in seeing this become a series, and you guys said yes. So here I am. I am super pumped for this. And I think that for this series, I'm not gonna limit it to just bags because I don't just talk about bags on my channel. I talk about SLGs a lot. So I'm also gonna sprinkle those in between. I'm going to try to go for anywhere from four to six items in each of these videos. So some days it might be four bags and two SLGs or all bags or I don't know, a mixture of them. I have no idea. Uh, but um, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to this and I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, now I will also be putting timestamps uh, I'll actually pin it as the first comment because maybe you're just interested in one item, not all six items or four items or what have you. So I will pin it as the first item. And I will also share how long I've had these items because I do think that's important when it comes to wear and tear and updates and whatnot. So again, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? All right, so let's begin with the first bag and that is the Louis Vuitton Alma BB in the Damia Ben. So I've had this handbag for going on seven years. And for as long as I've had it, and for as often as I use it, because this handbag is in heavy, heavy, heavy rotation in my collection still to this day, seven years later, it is held up insanely well. I don't have any pop stitches. I don't have any crack canvas. I don't have any scratches on the canvas. I don't have anything peeling on the canvas. I don't have any scratches on the leather either. But look at that no scratches at all on this leather. Now, because the Damia Ben does have that clear coating to, to make it or that color treated leather and it does have that clear coating, I have not experienced any type of clouding on the, on the Damia Ben. I haven't experienced any type of fogginess or anything like that. It still looks, it still looks like the day that I got it. And uh, there are no gnarly creases on that either. So it's it's been great. It's been absolutely great. The only wear and tear that I really have on this bag is on the zipper. And um, that's really just because of the nature of the bag. I mean, just from opening it up, it is a top zip closure bag. And you can really see that the, uh, the, the wear, because that gold has started to kind of peel away, it's really noticeable from here to here. Besides that, on the sides, it's not too bad. Uh, now, this isn't something that I would personally take into Louis Vuitton to get repaired, because like I said before, it is the nature of the bag. It's going to happen over and over and over again. So it's like, why even take care of it? You know, just leave it the way that it is. Um, so I personally am okay with that. Uh, the feet along the bottom do have a little bit of wear just from setting it down. But as far as the zipper pull, it still looks like the day that I got it. And uh, even the little D-rings and these little parts um, here look great. Now you will notice that I do not have the lock on here. Uh, I actually took off the lock. I wanna say it was probably five years ago, if not longer. And the reason I took it off is because I couldn't stand the sound that it made. Now you guys know I do like clanking sounds when it comes to bracelets and chains and stuff like that, but there was something about that lock that made it sound almost like a cowbell. And it was just so, so insanely loud. So I decided to take it off. I have it stored away. And um, I'm really happy <laughs> that, I, that I made that decision. Now this handbag does come with a removable not adjustable uh, strap that you can use either as a shoulder bag, cross body or what have you. And seven years later, I am still not fond of this strap. I really don't use it. Even if this was adjustable, to be completely honest with you, I don't think that I would end up using it. I don't find it to be the most comfortable. Uh, it's not stiff, but because it is the color treated leather and because it is a little bit thinner, sometimes I find that this strap digs into my shoulder or if I go to use a crossbody, it digs into my skin a little more than I would like. So that's another reason why I don't end up using it and I prefer to go for chains or I prefer to go for other straps that might be a little bit thicker. I think that if they would have made this adjustable, it would have been such a game changer for so many people. The shape of this bag in general, or the, the silhouette of this bag in general, I think is amazing. I love the size because it's not, even though it's a BB, it doesn't feel like it's a BB. You know what I mean? To me, this is more like a like a Goldilocks bag because it's not too big, it's not too small. It can still fit everything you need for the day and it doesn't feel like it's this tiny little bag either. So I think I think it's absolutely wonderful. 
you know? And one thing I will have to say is that I do have a, uh, a bag liner or an organizer in here. I got this from Samorga. And this has been a game changer for me because you guys know that Damia Ben is my all-time favorite print from the Fashion House. I love the history. It was the first print. I love the history. I love the delicious chocolate squares. And most of all, I love this beautiful red interior. However, this red interior can be quite deadly when it comes to light-colored SLGs. So if you do put any type of whites, baby pinks, taupes, or anything like that, any kind of neutrals in this bag without a liner, chances are you might experience some type of color transfer on those pieces. Just from the natural movement of you using the bag and it and the, the items kind of rubbing, you know, on the interior of the bag, you might experience that. So before I always used to use the dark colored SLGs just because I didn't want to experience the color transfer. I experienced color transfer with a Damien Ben bag many, many, many moons ago and I learned my lesson. So this organizer, this liner has been amazing because it allows me to be able to use the light colored SLGs that I wanna incorporate this uh, incorporate in this bag. Now over the years, uh, when I first got this bag, it was a little bit stiff just because of the dome shape that it has. But as, a, as the years have gone by, uh, it's also stretched out quite a bit, not to the point where it's loose and it's gonna look like it's like this, you know, all the time, definitely not, but it's loosened up enough to where you can put your items in here and you don't have to worry that the teeth on the zipper are going to like scratch it up against your, your hand or anything like that. But overall, for me, this handbag, it really doesn't have any cons. Like I said, the strap thing, I don't use it anyways. I prefer something else. Uh, but in general, this bag is all pros and um, I absolutely love it. I think, I think it's awesome. Even though it might not be a forever bag for me just yet, I will absolutely sing its praises because I feel like it has so much going on. It's a smaller bag that still packs a punch. It's a bag that can transition very easily from day to night. It's a bag that's great for grab and go. I mean, uh, it's it's carefree. You don't have to worry about uh, you don't have to worry about any type of water spots or anything like that. Uh, so I I am absolutely fond of this. And do I recommend it? Absolutely, one hundred percent. I think it is a fantastic fantastic handbag. Moving on to number two, that is the Chanel Wallet on Chain in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. So in June, this bag will be with me nine years, <laughs> nine years. And in my opinion, this has been one of the best purchases I have ever made from the fashion house. This, in my opinion, has got to be one of the most versatile handbags that I own. Even though it is small, I have been able to incorporate this into my lifestyle so many ways that this handbag has paid for itself over and over and over again. I think it is absolutely wonderful. Now, as far as wear and tear goes, uh, I do have one pop stitch. Let me show you guys. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I'm, if you're going to be able to see it or not, but it's right here. It's actually, it's actually pretty big <laughs> right there. I have one pop stitch. Uh, and you will also notice that I do have quite a bit of wrinkling on this leather portion here. And the reason that is, and it actually doesn't look as bad now because I actually have a, um, uh, a little base liner and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but if I take it out, you will notice that I have some gnarly, gnarly wrinkling on here. And the reason that is, is because there have been so many times that I have overstuffed this bag. You guys know how I am. You know how I roll. I've overstuffed this bag and um, that has happened. <laughs> that has absolutely happened. But this handbag, I mean, I... I I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, you can use it as a handbag. You can use it as a wallet. You can use it as a clutch. For me, this has been my number one travel bag. It's been everywhere with me over these last nine years. This is my go-to travel bag because of the fact that I can incorporate it different ways. So, you know, whenever I'm sightseeing, I like to use this crossbody. I put it underneath my coat. So, 
I don't attract too much attention. And whenever we go out to dinner that evening, I just hide the chain in and it turns into a really nice clutch. And I love it. I don't have to carry a big bag when I travel. I don't, you know, I don't want to go for something that's too, you know, too out there. And this fits everything that I need. And I don't just use it for travel. I use it on the daily. It is still in heavy rotation. This bag <laughs> makes me so insanely happy. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but I think it is wonderful. You know, and even though I do try to be mindful as far as how much I end up fitting in here, like I said before, sometimes I get carried away. If it's everything that I need, the fact that it does have the built-in credit card slots is a major game changer. That way you don't have to carry a card holder. You don't have to carry an extra wallet. You just have to go for your bare essentials. If it's a phone, it fits lotion, it fits lipsticks, you know, and you could fit other goodies in here uh, if you needed to, some, you know, some loose cash, but it's... It's an amazing, an amazing bag. So besides a pop stitch uh, and besides the fact that I myself <laughs> have, uh, you know, kind of caused this wrinkling, other than that, the caviar is, it's, it's in great condition and it is held up very, very nicely. There's no like pop stitches on here. There's no like kinks. There's no creases on the, on this chain either. Uh, no peeling on the hardware whatsoever. And I've used this in the rain multiple, like I can't even count how many times I've used it in the rain and it still looks incredible, absolutely incredible. So as I said, I do have like a base shaper on the bottom and this has really helped to, um, for these creases not to be as noticeable. Uh, and that way I can still end up carrying a little bit more. Um, again, I don't learn my lesson, but these have been great. And I will actually put um, the website because the, the company was so incredibly kind and they sent me these, I wanna say it was probably three or four years ago. And ever since they sent them to me, I've been using it in the bag whenever I store it as well. And it's really, um, it's really helped the bag to uh, to maintain its shape. I actually have a few others in my other wallet on chains. Uh, now I know that the wallet on chain, um, Every fashion house has their, you know, their interpretation or has their wallet on chain, right? And I have had a few in my collection and they've all been great, but I still keep coming back to this one. And I don't know if it's because it's so easy to use. It's so comfortable. I like the length of this strap. Uh, if it does end up fitting on you a little bit longer, you can always just kind of make a little knot on it. I know some people end up doing like a little loop in here to make it a little bit of a shorter, uh, of a shorter bag. I mean, you can do that as well but I just keep coming back to this wallet on chain. And I, I think that Chanel really does it, does it the best, you know, and this, this is such a great bag. So I think that if you're looking to branch into, into Chanel, or if you want to try out a brand, if you want to try out a bag from the brand, I think that this is awesome because again, it offers so incredibly much and you're able to incorporate it so many different ways into your lifestyle, at least in my opinion. I know some people have been able to fit their glasses in here. Obviously, you're not gonna fit a water bottle. You're not gonna fit this ginormous wallet either, you know? So you have to go a little compact, but it fits everything that you need very, very nicely. And I think that it is an incredible handbag. So when people ask me, hey, Minnie, what's a Chanel bag, you know, for a first timer, what's the Chanel bag that you recommend? What, you know, what bag should I add to my collection? I will always, always, always say the wallet on chain because of the reasons I just said. All right, let's keep going with number three, and that is the Aspinall of London, Medi Mayfair in the color Cherry Ombre. So I've had this bag for about seven months now, and I get so many questions on this handbag. Whenever I do film videos, if I have it in one of these two cubbies, I get a lot of questions on it. Uh, but this brand, I actually discovered it uh, last year, and I fell into the rabbit hole. I fell in love with so many of their silhouettes, and I am here to tell you that this brand has 100% exceeded my expectations because their craftsmanship, their attention to detail, their quality is so beyond so many other brands, it's insane. And I love the fact that they don't break the bank when it comes to their prices. They're a little bit more on the higher end of contemporary or uh, some people also consider it to be the lower end of luxury. But to be completely honest with you, there is nothing low low end when it comes to the quality that you get with Aspinall of London. My goodness, I am so in love with this brand. It is held up insanely well. This bag is also in heavy rotation. I do have another Medi Mayfair in a lighter color, 
But this color, I mean, come on. <laughs> this color, it's, it's red, has a champagne gold hardware, and it looks brand new. It looks brand new. I have used it so much, and every time that I use it, I get so many compliments on it. I like the fact that it's very structured. I don't think that it's too dressed up either. I don't think that you, I mean, that you have to wear a certain outfit. I mean, I'm very casual, and I love rocking this with a super, super, uber casual outfit, and it works. It absolutely works. I like the fact that this bag also comes with, um, Hang on. I like the fact that this bag also comes with a removable chain strap. It's very similar to like the Chanel uh, mini Coke or to the Coco handle. Uh, so you can take this off. Uh, you can use it crossbody. You can use it on your shoulder. Sometimes I like to use it just as a decoration. You guys know how I feel about chains and decorations. Other times I just like to kind of hand carry it. But let me just show you guys nothing out of place when it comes to this bag. It's insane. Uh, I do have some little scratches on the hardware, not too bad just from setting it down. But besides that, I love the little push lock closure that it has. There we go. And then on the inside, you have two little compartments and a little zip closure here. And you have a little bit of give right there. So it is a little bit stiff. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say, oh no, it's super easy. It can be a little bit stiff. And the more and more that I use it, I mean, I imagine that this in like two or three years time is gonna be a little bit easier to open up than uh, than I than it is now. But um, it's, it's still not like super stiff that you can only, you know, put one item in and take it out and then, pff, no, nothing like that. Um, but it is quite spacious and it is just, it's amazing. And even when you do that, it doesn't wrinkle too much here. How many top handle bags that you open up that way with the flap have this gnarly creasing back here? I have quite a few in my collection. And the fact that this does it, I think is absolutely fantastic. So I, I love it. I absolutely love it. They have different sizes when it comes to the Mayfair. They have the, um, they have the micro, I actually have one, or I'm sorry, the nano. Then they have the mini, the midi, and then the regular Mayfair. So this is the third one up. Uh, and I love this size. I think it is absolutely fantastic. I mean, if you're looking to go for a new brand and you don't want to go for something that breaks the bank, you want something that has fantastic quality, definitely check out Aspinall of London. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Um, oh, and it also has a magnetic little uh, pocket back here. I don't really use it. I've used it sometimes for cash, uh, but when I do that, I have uh, forgotten that I have the cash in there and then I find it, you know, a couple weeks later. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't really use that too often, but I love the way that it looks. Very, very comfortable and it is held up very, very well. And whenever you go to use it crossbody, I don't find that it protrudes off of my body too much either. Like it doesn't make like a funky, doesn't move around too much like this. Uh, it lays not flat up against your body the way that another crossbody might that's a little bit more slender or that doesn't have as much structure as this, but I also don't find that it makes too much, it doesn't bobble around too much. So I just wanted to point that out as well. But highly, 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 highly recommend Aspinall of London when it comes to the brand in general. Moving on to number four, that is the Saint Laurent Kate in the size medium in the gray pebbled leather with the silver hardware. And I do believe that this color is called smoke. If I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on it, but I do believe it is called smoke. So I've had this bag in November. This bag will be with me for years. So I've had it quite a bit. This hasn't been a handbag that has been in heavy, heavy, heavy rotation the entire time that I've had it. When I first got it, I used it quite a bit. And over the years, it's kind of lessened a little bit more. However, it is still definitely a favorite. And the reason why I really like this bag, I really love this silhouette, especially in the medium size, is because it's very simple. It's very simple, but I also feel that it gives your outfit a little bit of oomph without being too, you know, without being a little too gaudy. And the thing that I love about this bag the most is their pebbled leather. You guys know that. I am a huge fan of Saint Laurent's pebbled leather because I feel like it is virtually indestructible. I mean, there, is, there are no scratches. There is literally no wear on this handbag uh, because of this pebbled leather. I experienced the same thing with our card holders, with their, 
anytime it comes to their pebble leather. I mean, I think it is absolutely incredible. You can do this and you have no problems. You can go up against an abrasive surface, not on purpose. You know, you're not gonna sit there and just drag it through like a brick wall either, but you don't have to worry that any little thing is going to damage this pebbled leather because it is so insanely durable. So I am a huge fan of this, uh, of this, uh, of this leather. Um, I don't really have too many hairline scratches on the logo there either. I love this chain because it does have that shiny, uh, gold, that's that shiny silver hardware and it just glistens so nicely in like boutique lights or out in the sun. You know how I am. But as far as the interior of this bag, it just opens up like so. And you have, hang on, sometimes, and I'll talk about this in just a second, the chain has a mind of its own. But you just have one open compartment and one little slip pocket. I don't really use a slip pocket, to be honest. Um, but this little main compartment, I like the fact that it is very simple. So I'm able to fit everything that I need in here. I don't really like to go for large size SL, uh, larger sized SLGs because, again, I really want to maximize my space when it comes to this. But I can easily fit all of my daily essentials, no problem. Now, this chain, as you guys saw, sometimes it moves around a little too much, but you do have a stopper here that prevents it from having a, mind, a complete mind of its own. So I just had to throw that out there. But the strap itself, even though it is the metal, uh, it is very comfortable. It doesn't dig into my skin. It is not hollow. It is not flimsy. It has some really, really good weight to it. And I think, I think it's great. Look at that. It doesn't, it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel flimsy by any means whatsoever. But I really like the simplicity of this bag. I know that some people do end up doing a little knot on here to make it more of a shoulder bag. Uh, and I do like the tassel, Kate, the one that has that giant tassel here. I think it's really nice. But again, I really like the simplicity of this. I think that the simplicity speaks volumes when it comes to this style of, uh, of bag. So, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. Not only that, it's carefree when it comes to the rain too. You don't have to worry about, you know, using this, getting caught in the rain and then, oh my gosh, you have all of these water spots. Absolutely not. Once again, because of this leather. So it's carefree, it's comfortable, it's very spacious. If you are looking at the Kate um, silhouette, and you don't want to go for the smaller ones and you want something that's going to carry a little bit more with you but still not feel too massive, I think that the medium size is a great um, is a great way to go. Now the next item I've only had for three months, but I had a lot of you ask if I can talk about it, and that is the Louis Vuitton Micro Matisse in the monogram canvas. All right, so as I talked about in my unboxing video when it, when it came to this item, uh, you know, some people might consider this to be one of the dumbest purchases I have ever made because it has a ridiculous price point, all right? I fully admit that. It has a stupid price point for a very, very small bag. However, I really don't use it as a bag. For me, it is not a functional handbag whatsoever because it doesn't fit the main thing that I would like to carry in my handbag, and that is a phone. I know that a lot of people do end up using like those micro flip phones in here, and if you do have a smaller phone, it can fit, and it can be a, a functional handbag, but for me personally, it doesn't work out that way, and the way that I have incorporated it into my lifestyle has been as a wallet and as a catch-all, and it has been fantastic that way. Uh, I, I think it's awesome. I like the fact that it has, I mean, it's a pretty girthy, uh, <laughs> it's a pretty girthy wallet, right? Uh, and I do tend to use it in my larger bags, although I have used it in my side trunk, um, you know, these last couple of weeks, but I think it's great. It's spacious to use as a wallet. It's very spacious to use as a catch-all. And you guys know that I tend to get very stir crazy when it comes to what I'm carrying inside of my bags. I like to switch out my bags almost daily, and I like to switch out the majority of my SLGs daily as well. So I, I mean, I've gotten so much use out of this little thing over the last three months. I definitely don't regret it. Uh, I think it's great, but I'm not gonna sit here and deny that it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a ridiculous, that it's not overpriced because it absolutely 100% is an overpriced item. Uh, but 
having said that, <laughs> I still absolutely enjoy it and have zero regrets uh, that uh, that I went for it. It does have a little chain, a chain that it comes with that allows you to use it crossbody if you wanted to use it as a handbag. Um, I know that some people have actually used this to uh, have this be kind of like a belt bag or they turn it into a wristlet. I mean, I feel like the possibilities are somewhat endless when it comes to how you can incorporate this. You know, this is very, this is like a thicker, more dressed up version of the key pouch for, from Louis Vuitton. That's kind of how I view it and that's kind of how I end up using it, you know, and it definitely works. So if you want to use it as a bag, if you want to use it as a catch-all, as a wallet, as a belt bag, as a wristlet, what have you, I feel like there are so many ways that you can incorporate this little guy. And um, I don't have any, yeah, I don't have any scratches on this S-lock. And I know that usually you end up getting some kind of a, you know, just from it rubbing, but so far so good. I don't have, I think I have, I do have some little scratches up here, not too bad but I haven't had any issues so far. Again, I haven't had it for very long. Uh, I haven't had any issues with this part splitting or anything like that. It's been wearing absolutely fabulously so far. And I will continue to give you guys updates on how this little guy uh, ends up wearing, but I'm a sucker for it. <laughs> I am absolutely a sucker for it. I think it's so cute. Sometimes when I bust this out to pay and, I, and I'm using it as a wallet, people are like, oh my gosh, it's such, such a cute little wallet. You know, just because it has so much, has so much character compared to like a card holder or I don't know, at least that's the way that I see it. But it's not fussy and it doesn't catch on anything. It's, it's a great little pouch. So for me, it has been, um, it's been in heavy rotation using it as a wallet and as a catch-all these last three months. That brings us to our last bag, which is the Dragon Diffusion Small Size Santa Croce in the red leather. So I've had this handbag for about two months now, and this is where the bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly comes into play. Although some of you guys might consider this to be the ugly part in that title. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to include this handbag into this video is because I unfortunately experienced something that, um, that it didn't wear the way that I would have liked. And I had to share it with you just in case you were also looking to add this back to your collection or in case you have it and you haven't used it yet and it's something to just keep in the back of your mind. So unfortunately with this handbag, I did experience color transfer. And the first time that I used it, um, I, didn't, I didn't notice anything because I was wearing dark colored clothing and I had dark SLGs in here. The second time that I used it, I was wearing a bright white t-shirt and seeing as how this handbag doesn't have a long shoulder strap and it doesn't have you know, a crossbody option or anything like that, it's just an open little bag, uh, I tend to hand carry it and I actually had it on the crook of my arm. So didn't think anything of it. By the end of the day, when I used it the second time, I looked on my shirt and at the bottom of my shirt, I had like, like a reddish tint and I was like, what, where did that come from? I, I thought like, was there blood somewhere? Like I was trying to think of all these things, you know, trying to think like, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I didn't even think that it would have been the bag, like at all. It didn't even cross my mind. So after a little bit of investigating, um, it definitely was the bag. And we're talking, I mean, I had the bag on here. I was probably wearing it for, I don't know, maybe four or five hours. And it was a spot on my t-shirt about this big, very, very noticeable. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I started rationalizing, maybe I got the t-shirt wet, maybe this, maybe that. I don't, I was trying to think of all these things because I couldn't fathom that I would end up getting that much color transfer on, you know, on, on an article of clothing from this bag. Thankfully, uh, the second time that I used it, I was uh, using mostly Louis Vuitton canvas pieces and other dark SLGs, so I didn't get any color transfer on it. But had I used this with a light SLG, no doubt in my mind, I would have gotten color transfer, kind of like what I talked about with the Alma BB. So I wanted to show you guys on camera what I'm talking about. This is the little, uh, little bag that it came with, but just like so, and it could just be mine. Maybe it's a faulty thing. I don't know, but there we go. And then on the interior, if I was to do the same thing, it's actually a lot heavier obviously because of the texture that it has compared to the outside. But look at that. I'm not rubbing harder or anything like that. 
There we go. I'm actually gonna look at getting a leather sealer because I know some people use that after they dye items. That way they can seal in the color. So if I do that, maybe that will prevent the color transfer from happening in the future as far as the exterior goes. But the thing is, I also have to do something in the interior. Uh, maybe I can put the sealer in here as well. I don't know, man. All I know is I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I'm going to play MacGyver. I'm going to see what I can come up with, and I'll definitely have to report back to you guys. But I wanted to incorporate it, and I wanted to talk about this just the way that it is, without having to add anything else, the fact that this handbag did end up staining my clothing when I used it just on its own, the way that it, the way that it's intended, you know? So I just had to, <laughs> I had to talk about it just in case you bought it and maybe you haven't used it, something to be mindful of, or if you are thinking about going for one of these bags. Uh, but as I said previously, hopefully it is just a faulty bag. Hopefully it just happened to me. Hopefully it hasn't happened to anybody else. And uh, maybe the uh, the leather sealer or the color sealer, what have you, will end up uh, allowing me to use this bag in the future because I do like, the, I love the color, I love the silhouette, this leather feels amazing, but I'm not too happy about the fact that I have to be mindful now on how I use the bag. That's not, that's not what I want to do. The last thing that I want to do, it really irks me to be completely honest with you, um, because now I have to worry what I can and can't do with the bag because otherwise it'll stain my clothing or if I'm not careful, if I'm using something light, it'll end up staining my, my light SLGs too, which I don't want. I don't want to have to think twice about how and when or how, what I'm going to use the bag with because that really takes away from from wanting to enjoy the bag in the first place. It takes joy away from it, at least in my eyes. I don't know, but I am... I'm super, super bummed out. Super disappointed to say the least. But anywho, that does it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I know that I got very long-winded when it came to some of these segments, but what can I say? I know that I talk your your guys' ear off. I know that I have a tendency to do that, but I am not the type that just come on here and say, there's this bag, I had it for this long, this is great, this isn't, this isn't great, let's move on. I, I just don't work like that. I like to give as much information as possible as far as my experiences with these items, just in case you are also looking to add them to your collection, you know, and I feel like the more information you get about an item, whether it's from my channel or from other videos or whatever the case may be, the more information that you get from items that you want to possibly add to your collection, uh, the better you'll, you will feel about, at least in my opinion, the better you will feel about either passing on the item or about moving forward with that purchase, especially if you don't have the, the, if you don't have the ability to go to a boutique and see some of these items in real life. But anywho, I digress. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to give you a little bit more information and I sincerely hope that you enjoy this new series. And let me know which items should we talk about next when it comes to the good, the bad, and the ugly. I love you guys to the moon and back and I will see you guys in my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.